Let's talk about static IP addresses in Azure. In this lesson, we'll discuss dynamic versus static IP addresses, when and where static IP addresses can be used, and scenarios where you might need a static IP address for an Azure service. When you create a public internet-facing Azure service, by default it is assigned a dynamic IP address from the region's pool of available IP addresses. This address stays with the resource until its underlying service is stopped. For example, when I create a new virtual machine, a public IP address will be assigned to its network interface automatically by Azure. That public IP address will remain with the VM even if it's restarted or crashes. However, if I ever stop the VM's underlying service, that dynamic IP address will be released back to the Azure pool for someone else to use. If I later opt to start the underlying virtual machine service, Azure will assign a new public IP address to my VM's network interface and, by proxy, the virtual machine itself. To prevent that behavior, certain services allow me to assign a somewhat permanent IP address. This is called a static IP address in the Azure Resource Manager and a reserved or VIP address in Azure Service Management or Classic Mode. While you still can't choose this IP address directly, a static IP address will remain with its resource until the resource is deallocated. You can assign public static IP addresses to virtual machines, internet-facing load balancers, virtual private network gateways, Azure application gateways, and cloud services, the Azure Service Management slash Classic version of Platform as a Service. Static public IP addresses for virtual machines are configured into the network interface's settings. Load balancer and application gateways are assigned static public IP addresses when configuring their front-end IP address pools. A VPN gateway settings include the ability to assign a static public IP address. When do you want to use a static public IP address? Anytime you have a DNS A record that points to an Azure Services IP address, you'll want to make that public IP address static to prevent the need to update that record. The same is true if you have client firewalls that are addressing Azure resources by IP address or that require IP addresses for rule configuration. Some applications test IP addresses even without a firewall. If you have such an application, you'll want to make static the public IP address of the Azure resource that the application is trying to reach. Finally, you may have SSL certificates assigned to specific IP addresses rather than a domain name. Obviously, in that case, you'll want to retain the public IP address associated with that certificate. Now let's talk about private IP addresses. By default, each Azure resource that is created inside a virtual network has a private IP address assigned to it from the pool of available addresses in the subnet. As it is with public IP addresses, these private IP addresses are retained until the underlying service is stopped, at which time the IP address is released. If I start the underlying service at some later time, that service will receive a new private IP address from the subnet. Fortunately, we can assign static private IP addresses in Azure too. Virtual machines, internal load balancers, and internal application gateways can all be assigned a specific IP address from the subnet in which they live, and you can specify this address to be any available address within the subnet. Assigning static private IP addresses to a virtual machine, load balancer, or application gateway is done the same way as assigning a static public IP address. For virtual machines, you assign this static private IP address to the VM's network interface. For load balancers and application gateways, their private static IP address is assigned by the front-end address pool. So, when is a static private IP address useful? Anytime a virtual machine provides services to other virtual machines in the same virtual network, you probably want to assign those service VMs a static private IP address. An example of this would be a virtual machine acting as a domain controller. Also, you may have a firewall in your virtual network that requires each VM to have a static IP address. Finally, we should talk about domains in the Azure DNS service. Whenever you create a resource available via a public IP address in Azure, you'll also specify a domain name server eligible name for that service. For example, 
you're assigning a public IP address to a load balancer in the East US region, you might name that load balancer My Solution. If you do, your load balancer would be reachable at the fully qualified domain name of mysolution.eastus.cloudapp.azure.com. So, if your need is not to have a specific IP address assigned to a service, but for your service to be addressable by some fixed means, such as a domain name, then there's no need to assign a static public IP address to that resource. It already has a unique, fully qualified domain name that will not change for as long as the resource is provisioned. For virtual machines, Azure provides automatic local DNS resolution for internal requests. So again, if a static domain name for the resource would provide the same benefit as a static private IP address, then there's no need to assign a static private IP address. That said, you may have complex routing rules. For example, a hybrid network that spans both on-premises and Azure virtual machines. In that case, Azure supports DNS request forwarding. So, your domain controllers can query your local network machines as normal and ask Azure to resolve the names of any virtual machines in your cloud. Or, if you need end-to-end -end control over the entire DNS structure, Azure supports roll-your-own DNS schemes for directly querying local machines. Exam 70-534 probably won't ask you about how to do that, so I won't get into it here. But it's possible you'll be asked about the best way to address a resource. Generally speaking, you're better off using a fully qualified domain name instead of an IP address unless there is a compelling reason to use an IP address. If your situation allows you only to address resources via an IP address, use a static IP address. Otherwise, use domain names to resolve your resources. That allows Azure to properly route your requests with the least chance of misrouting something. That's it for this lesson. When you're ready, Let's wrap up here and move on to the next lesson.